Okay, so uh, I want to talk about in this video some ideas about how we're going to be, I guess you could say, evolving in the 21st century. And sort of different attitudes that must be uh, appreciated or cultivated alongside new ideas and new theories. And it's these new attitudes and these new perspectives that are going to allow us to really cultivate these theories. And uh, I think one very important thing that's been happening more and more lately has been the uh, ability to think about thoughts. And that simply means being aware of how we think and how it sort of molds our perception of the world. Not just that, but also when we begin to become less stuck in our own uh, conceptual world, we begin to sort of flow with the world. We begin to sort of allow the world to naturally unfold. We start to perceive things that maybe are a little bit more objective, or at least shared by other people. We kind of step out of ourselves. And I believe in order to really create more universal theories about human beings, we must be scientific, but we also must have an, an attitude with that science that is relatively new. Um, and this attitude isn't necessarily being uh, materialist or objectively empirical, but more so than that, being able to be self-aware, being aware of who we are and how we think and how we feel. I guess it's a sort of a degree of emotional, cognitive intelligence, self-reflection. I think this is a very important aspect to have in the 21st century, because when we sort of begin to step out of ourselves, we can attain a more worldly point of view, one where we sort of see the differences of others and not just appreciate them for being different, but actually sort of understand, understand someone else um, in a deeper and more meaningful way. And we sort of observe natural systems of uh, ideas and thoughts and how things sort of flow together. And we sort of see the bigger patterns and structures at work. So I guess you could say we have to kind of cultivate a Taoist attitude here. One where we are not so locked up by our desires and our thoughts and ideologies, even if they are empirically, um, empirically accurate or scientific. Um, our methodologies have to sort of loosen a little bit in order to create some a much more dynamic view of the world. And I guess this is more philosophical. I think in the 21st century, philosophies will rely less on less, less heavily on the Western-centric analytic versions and more on the free-flowing, open, I guess you could say, simple mindfulness that is so present in some, some Eastern philosophy. And if anybody's familiar with uh, Spiral Dynamics or Ken Wilber's work, uh, they speak of the 21st century as being an age where we begin to see holarchies. A holarchy is, is very simply um, a whole and a part, uh, basically a whole nest of developmental levels, which means something is a part of something else, which is a part of something else. It's a general unfolding of complexity in which the lower and sim simpler levels are included in the, the higher complex levels, uh, transcend and include. And we have systems of holarchies and flowing rivers and streams of different ideologies. And in the philosophy of Deleuze, for instance, uh, he sees the world as not frameworks or uh, particular rigid hierarchies, but as a whole nonlinear flowing system uh, or sub and subsystems that kind of pull together and then the uh, accumulation or the synthesis of all these different systems come together and create something new and he, he writes about this in a thousand plateaus I think I mentioned this in another video so all these seem all these things seem so related to the Taoist perspective of just perceiving what is ultimate reality is just the way and is the way of everything it is the way of the universe, and it just sort of everything just sort of flows and naturally just is. And I think if we can perceive better 
who we are and how everything naturally is from a bigger perspective, we may begin to be able to appreciate the mindfulness in Eastern philosophy, um, which arguably is a transrational perspective, meaning um, the rational perspective is a very analytical, sort of a top-down analysis to things. But recently we've begun to see uh, not only a breakdown or just the deconstruction and um, delegitimate the delegitimizing of um, Western, I guess you could say, methods. Not that they don't work, or not that they are, aren't necessary, but we're beginning to see that there are other ways to understand ourselves and systems, especially in the social sciences. Deland is big on breaking everything down, seeing, going from the bottom up. So we have a bottom up sort of scientific method that's uh, beginning to be appreciated. This is going to be seen more and more, I think, as we go into the 21st century. Um, and eventually, I think, at least from my own point of view, cultivating a sort of flex, uh, flexible, flowing attitude about everything is very important. So, in Zen they call us, you know, perceiving what is, uh, not being lost in ideas. Um, now, I forgot the author, I think her name is Brackwell or Blackwell. She wrote, uh, she basically is very into the whole meme thing. The, uh, the, a meme is basically just an idea. To her, memes are, uh, basically, uh, almost living things that repeat and they're like DNA and the ideas transfer from person to person and ideas evolve and they use us as their breeding ground basically well Zen in particular you could argue that it's a meme or an idea but more so than that it's a meme that's aware, self aware of memes in other words an idea that's self aware and it begins to sort of look at all of our concepts and eradicate them it just cleans our ideological garden. It uh, basically gives our mind a fresh palette to work with. And I think this will become very important, and it is important right now. But as we go into the 21st century, we're going to have to begin to re really rethink things. Um, arguably, we're entering into a new paradigm that's coming to a head, and a whole new wave of thinkers are probably going to be emerging soon enough, and they already are that will sort of say, look, we have to see this in a bigger perspective. We've been breaking things down with postmodernism and social sciences. We're, we've been learning about these crazy quantum physics uh, ideas about everything being a hologram. Uh, these things are changing our attitudes about the world and about the universe, about ourselves, and they might revolutionize how we understand ourselves. And we, begin, we might actually begin to have a world where as Einstein put it, uh, religions such as Buddhism, which focus more on uh, the self-aware, self-reflexive attitudes, uh, will become prevalent. And I'm not saying Buddhism is going to be the religion of the future, but surely I think the more mystical and contemplative uh, aspects of religion might begin to emerge and become more important um, alongside ritual. And this is another facet, I guess I'm talking about the philosophical, uh, religious, and spiritual dimensions of the 21st century. These things might become very important and uh, almost necessary in a world that's shrinking. Um, this new meditative attitude uh, is what allows uh, and uh, helps us appreciate other people and begin to understand them, and not just from a conceptual or ideological point of view but actually begin to expand beyond ourselves. Uh, I, I guess you could say we're entering into a world where we must be world-centric, or we are going to face um, violence and war and so many, so many very, very dangerous um, facets that w at one point weren't as bad. They weren't a problem. This goes back to evolutionary theories where any species... Um, or any uh, type of species, such as reptiles or mammals, increases in its uh, complexity or intensity over time to the point where it reaches a critical mass where it can't... Uh, where something that used to be good is now working against it, and now we're going to use that as a challenge to evolve.